Well, that was interesting. Yesterday, I could do no wrong. Today, I could do no right. Um, after yesterday, where I put any spin fish down there and it got hammered, I went all spin fish today. And the only thing that changed on my setup, my technique, was my fish nip recipe I had from the ocean was three days old and I had mixed it up with some herring scent. This new batch that I made, I was like, oh, I'll be in the river, why not? I got a bunch of anchovy scent, I'll just put some anchovy scent in it. So I put anchovy scent in it and we didn't get our first bite until 11. Now, do I think scent played a role? No, I really don't. Um, there were less fish, a lot of guys struggled today. There were guys that yesterday got all their fish that today only got one myself included. Uh, we only harvested one fish. We let a few go. We missed a few usual, but we only kept one fish after yesterday, keeping 10, but six were out in the ocean. So in the river, we went four for seven, like in two passes or whatever it was. Yeah. So yesterday, two passes, we hammered them out. It was pretty easy fishing. Today, I didn't get my first bite until 11. I missed a whole, whole tide change. That tide change high slack, man, that's that's usually perfect. And there were fish caught. I just flat out couldn't get bit. Um, I tried changing things up, putting anchovies out there. Um, tried changing colors. It just, I got in my own head is what happened. Uh, I started down on the Oregon side and was marking fish left and right. And I'm like, oh man, here we go. And I just got bored. Um, I didn't wait out for the tide to switch. I just said, well, well, church hole went well yesterday. I'm going to go over there. And then I sat around and waited and I watched the ship swing on the Oregon side and just thought, you left a ton of fish on the Oregon side for what? One or two nets a pass? Man, you, you should have stuck it out over there. But I don't know. I just uh, turned right when I should turn left today. There was nothing good about how... I fished today. I, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be so hard on myself, but just knowing how well we did yesterday and really not much changing and to have it all fall apart. Um, I don't know. I, I do know that typically I personally struggle on these smaller tides, which it should be easier because these smaller tides, the fish don't move as much. So you get to stay on top of them. But these last several years, for whatever reason, I seem to struggle a little bit more on these softer tides and again it might just be all in my head oh, but that is part of the fun of fishing in all honesty you know I've gotten to a point where I I live for the bite that's all I care about I just want to see that rod fold over and after that hopefully we land a fish that's great but when that bite happens that means that what I did worked and everything else is gravy so on days like today, when the rod doesn't fold over, I know that I'm playing the chess game completely wrong. So I was chasing fish around the graph. I was fishing shallow when I saw fish shallow. I was putting them down on the deck when I saw them down deep. I just, it wasn't working. <laughs> so I'm going back to the drawing board. Um, typically on these softer tides, the pro trolls, skateboard flashers do better on these softer tides, warmer water. I have always done the best down here running my triangle flashers with an anchovy spinner behind it. And yesterday was my first half day in the river, not quite a full day. And today was my first full day and I committed to the skateboard flasher and spin fish because it worked so well yesterday and it didn't work today. So tomorrow I'm gonna go half and half. I'm gonna go half pro troll with spin fish and half uh, because water's warmer, high sun, I'm probably going to go mostly green machine with anchovy spinners in behind it. And that is kind of my comfort zone. That's what I've always done well on down here, regardless of the tide set, regardless of water temperature, I can get them to eat that anchovy spinner. So fingers crossed that tomorrow I can figure it out because today was brutal to sit there and look at your clients for five hours and not see a fish hit any of your rods and you're seeing a net every once in a while. Again, it wasn't a red hot day by any means, but definitely a lot slower today. And it could be, uh, we saw less fish on the graph. It could be because this water temperature is cooler like last year 
and these fish are just shooting up. I mentioned that in yesterday's update. That might be happening. Um, time will tell, but it the water is cooler. It hasn't really created that big thermal barrier. Uh, most of the action has been below the bridge, just like last year. There's a little bit of a bite, but I even tried running all the way up to the top of the channels on the Washington side, and nothing, not a bite, and my grapple is empty. And that tells me those fish are just flying upriver. They are transitioning lower in the estuary and not quite up around the bridge like they do in years where we have warmer water. So it's all conjecture, it's all theory, it's all going off of past knowledge, um, but this is really only my first full day in the river. So it's all a guess at this point. You know, after a week or two, I'll have a better handle on what I think these fish are doing. But right now it's straight up guessing. So tomorrow I'm back at it. I guess that's all I can do, right? That's part of the fun of fishing is learning and trying to figure out a better mousetrap. And I'm gonna go home and spend probably the next two hours tying up new mousetraps. <laughs> So I get to go play with toys. All right, well, hopefully I'll be a little bit more upbeat and excited tomorrow, but today, I sucked. Apologize to my clients. That was brutal. Oh well, tomorrow's a new day. Here we go. We'll see you guys then. Later.